Okay, folks, glad you're back. It's October 21st, getting close to the end of October. Now, I know true Oktoberfest over there in Germany has already come and gone. I kind of left right there at about October 6th, but we're still celebrating all month long, and we're going to be celebrating with the next, or actually not really the last, but the next good German beer in our repertoire here, the Einger Oktoberfest Märzen. Now, just like I've said before, you know, we've reviewed Einger. We reviewed that back when we reviewed Celebrator. We reviewed Oktoberfest beers. We know what Oktoberfest beers are, and we know what Märzen's are. But we're going to take a taste of this one, and we're going to find out what makes this one tick. And we're going to do it on... Okay, folks, welcome back. Glad you're still with us. We are going to be reviewing the Eyinger Oktoberfest Märzen. Oh, this is going to be lovely. Now, it's, uh, we've reviewed Eyinger before. We reviewed the Celebrator, okay? And that's a classic German beer right there on its own. This, of course, is going to be a Märzen. It's going to be uh, March, brewed in March, and then served at the folk festivals here. Uh, well, there <laughs> in Munich in the fall. Now, this one isn't quite in Munich, but it's very close, okay? Um, I believe we mentioned this before. If not, you can go back and you can look at the one that I did for Celebrator and see the specifics. I'm not really going to go over a lot of the specifics uh, about Einger. Uh, if you want to see that, go back and see the one for Celebrator. But I am going to talk a little bit more about some of the interesting things about the Meritsons, the beers, and even the glassware for that matter. <clears throat> now, I do have a little bit of a upper chest thing that's still hanging around, so if I cough or if I clear my throat, please excuse me, okay? Anyhow, we're going to get cracking on this review. We're going to go ahead and get cracking for that matter. Now, today I'm using my, of course, my half liter, really at the moss, I guess you'd say. Um, it is condensed. It's not frosty. It's not frozen. Uh, but it does have a little bit of a condensation. Keeps it a little bit chilled. Now, we're going to open this one. I'm going to see if I can get it to sound. I believe last time, did we? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah, the same we did. The last time we did a video, you could actually hear this. And I couldn't hear it when I opened it. But the microphone picked it up. So we're going to see if we can do the same thing here. Now, go ahead and put the bottle opener there. Okay. Gave me a little bit of a, a pop, <clears throat> a little bit of a hiss there, which was kind of good. Hopefully you can hear it. Now, again, it's a Meriton. It's not going to be overly carbonated. I'm going to try to pour this more like this. Okay. And see what we get. Good color to it. Oh, look at that. It's going down the middle of the glass here. Producing a lot of good foam. A lot of foam. Holy Moses. As you can see, that's a lot. But let me go ahead and go ahead and uh, give you a little bit more about the, well, the appearance. Medium to very fine bubbles. Slightly off-white. It's not absolutely paper white. Doesn't really matter. Just is what it is. I'll let it go down just a little bit before we continue to pour. I'm going to look to see what we have on the bottle. Amber colored, rich, full bodied Einger at the foot of the Bavarian Alps is one of the world's most in respected, oh, okay, respected breweries, family owned and operated since 1878. Now, it's not quite as old as some of the other ones, the Hagabshore or, uh, for that matter, uh, Paul Lanner, right? Not as old as those, but still very old and very well respected. Well over 100 years old, so you got to love it. <clears throat> and these Germans know how to do their beer, that's for sure. It also has, if you can see the back there, I don't know if you can see too much of it, uh, the Bavarian blue and white lozenge effect on the shield. Which means that it's coming from the Bavarian uh, area. And I believe we mentioned that too, by the way, in one of our previous reviews. So again, if you want to learn more about that, you can do that. It was 
inspired and used uh, by one of the Dukes. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Almost a half, 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 half. Getting close. I believe this is going to be just about a half liter. 500 milliliters. Yep. A half liter. Okay. Which is good because I've got my half liter mug. As you can see, there's a little ring around there, which tells me that that's the half liter mark. Let's see if I can go ahead and finish this up. Yeah, I can. Oh, look at that. Looks like it just came out of Oktoberfest itself, didn't it? All righty. <clears throat> I'm going to let that go down just a little bit um, and see what we can do here. So stay tuned. I am going to take a little break here. Let that head go down. We're going to come right back. Okay, folks. I hope that wasn't too long of a pause. Um, I did want the head to go down just a little bit before I attempt to review the rest of the beer here. <clears throat> but I didn't want to waste any of your time, any of your precious time here, but I did want to make sure that I was able to give you the full review on the beer without having to wait around. Now, remember, we are going to be reviewing this beer on the five categories of the Beer Judge Certification Program. That's the aroma, the appearance, the taste, right, the mouthfeel, and the overall impression. Now, let's start out with the aroma. It is a good German beer, and we've done this with the Celebrator, so we know we've got something special. Go. I'm smelling a lot of good malty goodness. Um, it's a little bit more, more amber, but that means to me that this Meritzen is going to have that full bodied malty aroma to it. It does have some hops to it. It is going to include that hops and it just, it's, it's going to make it smell wonderful. There's almost a, there's almost a fruity taste to it or a fruity smell to it. I'm going to say something like a raspberry or something like a, a jam. Uh, I know I've mentioned this before. It doesn't smell like a peach, but it smells something like like a ground berry, like a, something like a strawberry, or perhaps a raspberry, not a blueberry, not a, not a blackberry, but something along that line. Maybe even a cherry. <clears throat> I'm going to smell it again. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a semi-fruity flavor or smell to it. It doesn't have to. It is a Meriton, but they are a little bit sweeter. So we're going to have that that nose profile to it. And again, the, um, yeah, the, just the smell just kind of wafts up and, and it hits you right when you're, when you're pouring it. I did notice that when I was pouring it. Now, for the, as for the appearance, I did say earlier, because I wanted to talk about the, the foam, the head, while I had a chance, medium to fine bubbles. Right now, <clears throat> a lot of the medium bubbles have left. A lot of the larger bubbles have gone away. It has still got a good head. Remember, we had a little break there, and I had to let it uh, go down. I think it was about a two-minute break. Is it about a two-minute break? Yeah, they're saying it's about a two-minute break. And it has receded, but it hasn't gone away. Also wanted to mention that it's got a little Brussels lace about right around here. Okay, it's got a little bit on that side there. Got a little bit in the back. I didn't really do too much to it. I didn't, I didn't get the bubbles uh, going. I didn't get the head uh, going again. But it has stayed right about here, which is really kind of unique, and I like that. We haven't seen that a lot with a lot of our Mertens that we've tried for Oktoberfest. But this one, and another thing we uh, see, is that it's the color on it. The color is not light. It's not straw. It's not golden. Uh, this is going to be more of an amber. What you would think would be a good Meriton. A little side story here. I do go to a nice little small brewery located not too far away. And my favorite beer for years has always been their Meriton. Now, they serve it year-round. Okay. They brew it, serve it, and gone. It's not the traditional brewed in March, stored, let cask age, or whatever aging that they do. But they do brew it and serve it, and it is wonderful. It's a little on the sweet side. It's not as overly carbonated either, but it's about this color. And this is slightly hazy, too, since we're talking about appearance. 
It's coming up from the bottom. It's coming up pretty good. It's not, like I said, it's not going to be overly carbonated. So we're not going to have that nice explode in your mouth uh, carbonation like you would with a nice good Pilsner or lager or anything like that. But it is going to release just enough to give you a nice good nose, a nice good flavor when you're tasting it. So we're going to taste it right now. I mean, the appearance, what can you say? Malty, 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 malty. Again, just enough carbonation to release that gas to give you a full nose, to give you a full flavor profile. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, I still am tasting a little bit of a jam, a little bit of a, a fruity flavor, maybe a raspberry, maybe something like that. Not a peach, not a, maybe a strawberry. Okay, not completely a fruity, fruity flavor, as you would think, but very sweet, very, very nice. Um, it's not tart, and it doesn't sit on the back of your mouth. There's no odd flavors. I remember I mentioned metallic. There's no flavors like that. It doesn't strike you as being, ah, you know, I've got this the weird taste in my mouth. That also would come from, like, the hops, perhaps the water. Yes, very, very, very good. <clears throat> very good, very drinkable. Something you can drink for a long time. It doesn't smack you in the face with one or more ingredient. You can taste the hops. Yes, you can taste the hops. It gives you that little bit of a hoppy tartness, a hoppy bite to it, but it's not in your face. And that malt definitely balances out incredibly well. Again, Germans, what can you say? They know their beer. They know how to do it. They know how to do it right. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. Um, it's a shame that this isn't one of the six that goes into the Oktoberfest in Munich. Now, they may have a tent there. I really don't know. Or some other type of um, location around. But I think you're being very slightly south east of Munich. Um, they're in the vicinity. They're right there in Bavaria. They're in the Bavarian Alps. I believe that's what it said on the bottle. Just enough carbonation. Wow. And it does remind me of my little brewery that I go to. Their Meritzen that uh, they have there is much of the flavor profile. Now, they don't get the same hops. They don't get the same malt. They don't get the same ingredients, and we certainly don't have the same water that they do there in uh, in Traveler's Rest, actually, South Carolina. Um, so, but um, it's, it's it, to me, this is what I consider a Meriton. Theirs is very much like it. So it is pretty close to style. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now, <clears throat> mouthfeel. Since it's not overly cloyingly sweet, it does have a little bit of sweetness to it, but not cloying. It's not going to sit on your mouth. The carbonation is going to clear that off pretty quickly. Uh, whatever is in there is going to clear that off. So it's not, uh, it's not gummy. All right. So it's not gummy. It, it doesn't, it doesn't, hinder your drinking experience. That carbonation is not a detractor or lack of it for that matter. Again, it's incredibly balanced for what it is. The right amount of everything pulled into for that uh, for that good mouthfeel. Overall impression. Okay. You know, it is Oktoberfest or at least the end of Oktoberfest for that matter. We've got two more beers that we've got to try, by the way, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But overall impression, I mean, Seriously, <laughs> this is to me right there what I would have wanted to have as a wonderful Oktoberfest Merton. Okay, Iger, if you ever get a chance to get it, get it. You may have to go to a nice beer cellar, little beer venue. I've seen these over here at Total Wine. I've known, I pulled this from one of our little shops locally that sells great beers. And we're going to be reviewing a lot of their beers that come from there. 
I've already, I've already warned them. I said, guys, I don't think you understand. I may be a regular customer. Anyhow, uh, so you may have to find that there at a nice beer retailer. Uh, but I'm sure that you could. It is going to be coming up close to the end of the season. I don't know who wants to get an Oktoberfest like this, so they may still be on the shelves. I do know that I saw it at Total Wine. I saw it over here. So they're going to hang. It's going to hang around. And you can drink this all winter, too, by the way. Um, the alcohol content, well, 5.8, 6, uh, 6% alcohol. So, you know, it's not bad. You know, it's going to keep you warm then. Uh, and by the way, that's another thing. It's just just full enough that it's going to be a nice, good, winter, warmer beer. How about that? Even though it's past Oktoberfest. Anyhow, we are going to go into the beer specs next, and here we go. Eyinger Oktoberfest Beer. Style, Oktoberfest Merzen. ABV, 5.9%. SRM, 9 to 11. IBU, roughly 25. Pairs well with pork, chicken, medium to strong cheeses, and pretzels. And now, for some beer through history. Beer through history. A brief history of the Reinheitsgebot. A brief history of the German beer purity law. Known as the Reinheitsgebot is a testament to the enduring legacy of quality brewing in Germany. This regulation had its origins in the late 15th century when it was first implemented in the Duchy of Bavaria in 1516. At that time, the primary motivation for enacting the law was to maintain the purity of beer by restricting the ingredients used in brewing. The original Reinheitsgebot stipulated that beer could only be brewed using water, barley, and hops. Yeast, a crucial element in the fermentation process, was not initially included because its role was not fully understood at the time. This law not only set the standard for beer quality, but it also laid the foundation for the modern brewing industry in Germany. Widespread Adoption and Amendments The Reinheitsgebot quickly gained recognition and was adopted by other German states over the years. By the end of the 16th century, it became a widespread practice throughout the Holy Roman Empire. In 1906, Bavaria included yeast as an accepted ingredient, recognizing its importance in the brewing process. This simple yet effective regulation ensured the consistency and quality of German beer for centuries. It also served as a shield against the use of potentially harmful or adulterating ingredients, further establishing Germany's reputation for producing some of the world's finest beers. Modern Impact and Preservation The Reinheitsgebot's legacy endures to this day. Even though it has evolved into more of a tradition than a strict legal regulation, it remains a symbol of German brewing excellence. Modern interpretations of the law have expanded to include other ingredients, such as wheat, for brewing specific styles like wheat beer. While the Reinheitsgebot has faced criticism for potentially stifling innovation in brewing, it has also garnered respect as a preservation of brewing heritage. Many German breweries, especially those with centuries-old traditions, continue to honor the Reinheitsgebot by adhering to its principles, producing beers of outstanding quality. Today, this historical regulation not only safeguards the purity and tradition of German beer, but also serves as a testament to the enduring commitment to excellence in the world of brewing. Well, folks, that's our review today of the Einger Oktoberfest Märzen. Oktoberfest? Yeah, Oktoberfest Märzen. Thank you for being here. I really enjoyed drinking this beer. I enjoyed bringing it to you, and hopefully you'll get a chance to get some yourself. Remember, see if you can find this. This is well worth the experience. I can guarantee you that. Lovely Martin. Martin, how about that? Anyhow, again, thank you for being here. Hopefully you've learned something with the beer specs. And remember, subscribe. Ring that notification bell. Give us a thumbs up. Give us some love. We love to build the channel. We want to hear from you. We want to know what you want to see next. If there's a beer you want to review, if there's something you want us to 
talk about, please bring it up. Give it uh, in the comments down below, down below the little doobly-doo. Somebody said that one time. I thought it was kind of a neat little terminology for the description there. And remember, everything we have here uh, is going to be in the description. Okay. We have the beer review logbook. Naturally, I talk about that quite a bit. Eight ninety nine off of Amazon's best little book since well little black books and don't worry don't 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 put your don't put your girlfriends in there it just wouldn't look good anyway you can go you can bring this put it in your pocket go to beer venues and write your experiences down if you're ever in the upstate or maybe some surrounding areas go to the Ale Trail all right this is the upstate Ale Trail where they will give you directions or otherwise listings for different breweries around the upstate area, possibly Asheville, possibly uh, Raleigh, Durham, Triangle, Columbia, Georgia, maybe, who knows? I don't know. Again, I'm still trying to find out if that up trail, ups, <laughs> Ale Trail is a regional thing, an upstate thing, or in other areas. I brought this to a little venue last night. It's the Total Wine, Total Guide to Beer. And people were like, oh, man, where'd you get that? Where'd you get that? Well, Total Wine. I also went to Total Wine recently. They don't seem to have any in stock, at least locally to me. I know they got it online. I know that it's an iBook. So if you've got an iPhone or an iPad or you just want to get irate about it, no, I'm kidding on you. Um Go ahead and see if you can download this, okay? They don't seem to have it in a PDF form, which is really kind of disturbing. I may have to write them about that, but see if you can get that. Maybe they have it in print. Maybe they can send it to you. So do see if you can communicate with them. Remember the beer, the beer judge certification beer score sheet. First of all, it's a nice little piece of paper you can print, fold it up, put it in your pocket, take, to, take it to your next beer adventure. Write your Review here the five categories for the Beer Judge Certification Program right there on the side there. And helps you diagnose any off flavors that you may have with your beer. So you're at a beer venue, something just doesn't taste right, you can write it down there. But go take that. Uh, there is a link down there for that Beer Judge Certification Program score sheet. Okay, download that and print that out. Now, again, I do want to say, remember... Subscribe, right? Hit that notification bell. Ding, 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 ding. Give us a thumbs up. Like the video. We love it. We love hearing from you. And let us know what your thoughts are for any upcoming videos. Okay? Until then. Prost. Teen, teen. Hand pie. Salute. And, of course, from America. Cheers. Too bad Oktoberfest is over. When's Oktoberfest next year? Peace, love, and beer.